broken toilet leads to one of the most significant discoveries in history. Once in a while, someone uncovers an ancient mystery, like something out of an Indiana Jones film. Whether abandoned catacombs, archaic books, ancient treasure, or something else entirely, these discoveries can help us understand history piece by piece. Of course, archaeologists and historians most often unearth these discoveries. However, occasionally, regular folk find some incredible relics. Take, for example, Mr. Luciano Fagiano, a 60-year-old Italian man. While trying to fix his toilet, Fagiano found something rather unexpected. His discovery would soon take him deeper and deeper into the depths of history. Soon enough, Fagiano needed to alert the authorities, and his life changed forever. Luciano Fagiano, a 60-year-old, grew up and lived his entire life in Lecce, Italy. Lecce lacks the tourism draw of cities like Rome, instead relying on olive oil and ceramic production. As Fagiano grew older, he didn't want to work in agriculture or ceramics. Instead, Fagiano had a very particular business in mind, one that might actually help bring tourists to the area. You see, ever since Fagiano was a little boy, he dreamt of running his own business, an Italian restaurant. While he had to wait some time, Fagiano finally started to realize his ambitions. Little did he know that his dream would lead to the greatest adventure of his life. As years passed by, Fagiano never gave up on the idea of having his Italian eatery. As such, he saved as much as he could while still providing for his children and wife. Thankfully, after many years, Fagiano had saved enough money to finally pursue his life dream. As any entrepreneur will tell you, this is an exciting time. Soon enough, Fagiano started to look at different locations in Lecce that would make a perfect fit for his dream. After a little bit of searching, he found a spot that suited his needs perfectly. However, growing up in Lecce, Fagiano knew he needed to investigate the building fully. After all, buildings that are centuries old or more are often not up to code. While the building that Fagiano wanted to buy was quite old, it had thankfully been refurbished. Recently, the owner had painted the walls in white and installed a fresh brand new heating system. So while it had history, the building would still keep guests warm and happy. What's more, it had the perfect location to make his business a success. So Fagiano purchased the entire building. Unsurprisingly, he had a very clear vision in mind. After all, he had had quite some time to think about it. Fagiano had plans for every single floor of the building. Hopefully, he would get the family business started in no time. At least that's what Fagiano thought. As a visionary man, Fagiano had already thought of every single detail through. First of all, he would turn the lower level of the property into his dream eatery. Then, after getting the business running, he would move to the property's upper levels. Fagiano lived with his wife, Anna Maria Sano, and his 12-year-old son, David. Furthermore, Fagiano also had two other sons who no longer lived with him. Now, they'd always have a place to stay. While Fagiano was incredibly excited about his new project, he also noticed some things about the building. He would need to fix a couple of things before he could even think of opening his eatery. While Fagiano seemed to have the perfect plan, he would later discover that it wasn't going to be as easy as he thought. As soon as he purchased the building, Fagiano noticed that one of the toilets downstairs was utterly unusable. After looking into it, Fagiano couldn't quite figure it out. At that moment, he thought that it was just a broken pipe or maybe something was blocking the toilet's sewage. However, Fagiano knew one thing for certain. It would cost him some money to fix it. So he went with the lowest costing option, hire some helping hands and fix the toilet himself. Little did Fagiano know that his actions would lead to a massive discovery. When the time came to turn the ground floor of his building into an eatery, Fagiano asked his older sons, Marco and Andrea, to come home and help. Of course, they would also help him with the toilet. The last thing that any restaurateur wants is backed up sewage making its way in. After his sons arrived, they immediately got to work. Fagiano and his sons dug a trench. That way they could locate the pipe in question and figure out the problem. With any luck, this project would only take a couple of days and everyone would be able to return to their normal lives. However, that isn't exactly what happened. Fagiano was determined to locate the source of the problem. What's more, he had to do anything possible to stop it from spreading any further. Upon closer inspection, Fagiano realized that a leaking pipe in the toilet was causing the issue. As such, Fagiano and his son started digging up the pipe. 
Even though Fagiano thought he could fix the pipe himself, there was also the possibility that they had to replace the whole thing with a brand new one. However, in the process of doing this, Fagiano and his sons would find something rather extraordinary. What's more, something that they couldn't have imagined, not in a million years. Once he located the issue, Fagiano believed fixing the pipe wouldn't take too long. I said to my sons, come, I need your help, and it will only be a week, Fagiano told the New York Times. Of course, Fagiano had no idea what he was truly dealing with. Meanwhile, Marco and Andrea were looking forward to solving this issue quickly so they could return to their ordinary lives. If only. One week into the process, the team of father and son stumbled across something completely unexpected. As they continued to dig, the family uncovered a false floor. While they had no idea what hid underneath the false floor, they were eager to continue investigating. As soon as he found the false floor, Fagiano knew that things would need change. This would no longer be a simple pipe fix. Furthermore, the dig would almost certainly last longer than a week. For all he knew, it could take months. However, now Fagiano desperately wanted to know what hid underneath the false floor. All Fagiano could see beneath the false floor were glints of paving that looked very old. They needed to find out more, so they started digging further down. Not only did Fagiano want to know what lie beneath the floor, but they still hadn't found the problem in the pipe, so they had no choice but to continue. In order to continue to follow the pipe, Fagiano and his sons needed to remove the false floor, so they continued. While removing the floor, the Fagiano team had to remove bags and bags of rubble and dirt from the basement. Clearly, they had underestimated the amount of material that stood between them and the pipe. Still, the Fagiano team stayed determined to reach the problem. They couldn't wait to discover all the secrets hiding beneath the mysterious building. Soon, the team cracked through the false floor. With this layer out of the way, Fagiano and his sons made a jaw-dropping discovery. As it turns out, Fagiano's new building was built on top of an ancient treasure. It took them weeks of working all day and all night, but eventually they were able to remove the false floor. We found underground corridors and other rooms, so we kept digging, Fagiano said. Incredibly, the ancient flooring led down to another floor, which led to a tomb built by the Messapians. The Messapians lived in the region over 2,000 years ago, long before even the Romans came around. Soon enough, the Fagiano team uncovered a grain storage chamber the ancient Romans employed. Then, the family continued searching around to see what else they could find. Surprisingly, they also found a basement of what had been a Franciscan convent. However, the amazing discoveries wouldn't stop there. As you can imagine, Fagiano spent hours upon hours upon hours exploring the hidden spaces beneath his building. Soon, what started as a small project turned into a family obsession. The more time Fagiano spent under his toilet, the more interesting things he would find. You see, ancient people didn't care about labeling certain architecture as historical landmarks. As such, centuries of history remained hidden under a modern building in Lecce. Now, thanks to the sewage problems and a leaking pipe, Fagiano and his sons had found something extraordinary beneath their home. At this point, Fagiano decided to have an honest conversation with his family. After finding the hidden rooms, Fagiano believed that the wise thing to do was to keep the discovery to themselves. He thought that neighbors and friends would ask too many questions or want a piece of the action. Furthermore, Fagiano also made his sons promise that they would not tell their mother, Anna Maria. He didn't know how she would react to their ancient discovery. Most of all, Fagiano feared that any problems with authorities or historians would delay the completion of his eatery. While he didn't want to keep secrets from his wife, Fagiano believed it was the best option at the moment. However, soon everybody started to wonder why they'd been down there for so long. Indeed, there may have been another reason why Fagiano wanted to keep his discovery from his wife. At this point, he and his sons had started using a rather unconventional way to continue exploring the subterranean world. The new approach? He would often tie a line around David, his youngest son. Afterward, he would lower the young man into a newly uncovered layer. Fagiano really wanted to see what lie in the layers beneath. While it was an extremely dangerous job for a 12-year-old boy, David was more than happy to help his father. I made sure to tell him not to tell his mama, he said. Soon the neighbors started to get involved, given the mess and noise. Soon neighbors started to have some serious questions. Between the piles of rubbles, the older son's extended stays, and the massive amounts of noise coming from the basement, they knew something was up. 
While they didn't know the details, the neighbors no longer believed Fagiano was just dealing with a broken pipe. Later on, they became suspicious that Fagiano and his sons were conducting an illegal dig, so they decided to do something about it and alerted the authorities. Soon, the family received an unexpected visit from the police, who started to ask them all sorts of questions about the activities they were doing beneath the building. As the inspectors made their way to Fagiano's property, they had some valid reason to assume what the Fagiano team was doing was against the law. You see, in Italy, it's illegal for anyone to dig more than 50 centimeters into the ground because of archaeological interests. So you can dig for plumbing, but not for treasure. Furthermore, because of the likelihood of finding a unique artifact, citizens are often not allowed to dig underneath their homes or properties without supervision. As such, the police instructed Fagiano to stop digging the moment they arrived. Fagiano's initial plan of turning the lower level of the building into a trattoria now had to wait. While Fagiano and his sons wanted to continue exploring beneath their property, they also knew that they had to follow Italian law. Worse still, they wouldn't get the answer they wanted right away. In fact, the family had to wait for more than a year for the courts to decide if they could continue to dig. In the end, the authorities allowed them to continue their work. However, there would be one condition. An archaeologist would have to oversee their work. Furthermore, the archaeologist had the right to correct or stop their work at any time if they did not follow orders. It seemed fair enough, and Fagiano felt thrilled with the news. He couldn't wait to begin digging again. Once Fagiano received the authorization from the authorities, he went back to exploring the ruins beneath his building. He couldn't wait to continue to unearth the ancient treasures. Besides finding rooms and Franciscan convent, the team also uncovered everything from medieval-era relics to ancient faces. Moreover, Fagiano also found long concealed frescoes and religious bottles used by the Romans. Fagiano and the archaeologists could not believe all the different eras items turned up from. Furthermore, they were stunned to see the excellent condition in which these objects remained. It felt like a living timeline right in their hands. And the discoveries just kept coming. Giovanni Gian Greco, a heritage official, helped the Fagiano team and supervised the dig at the time. In an interview, Gian Greco said, The Fagiano house has layers that are representative of almost all the city's history. Now, all thanks to one broken pipe, Fagiano had made one of the most significant discoveries in Italian history. Fagiano and his family did more than all the hard work. They also paid for the entire dig. As such, Fagiano became completely obsessed with the excavation. It was their baby. Furthermore, Fagiano started doing quite a bit of research into the ruins beneath his home and the eras they came from. While the head of the family became immersed in his archaeological dig, not everybody felt the same way. Marco and Andrea, his oldest sons, believed the project had started interrupting their normal lives. What's more, their father told them that it would only last a week or two, tops. However, a year and a half later, they were still digging every day. We were kind of forced to do it. I was going to university, but then I would go home and excavate. Marco came home as well, Andrea said later. Soon they began to feel that they should all move on and leave the dig behind them. While Fagiano felt excited because of his discoveries, he still needed to find the main goal, the broken pipe. Furthermore, at some point, the discoveries would end. So Fagiano started to think about what to do with his ancient treasure. Maybe he could start a different business. Why not? Eventually, Fagiano grew tired of all the work before him. After all, Fagiano was just trying to fix a plumbing system. What's more, Fagiano still wanted to open his dream restaurant. It all became too overwhelming for Fagiano to handle. I was still digging to find my pipe. Every day we would find new artifacts, Fagiano recalled. After a while, it became routine. After many years of hard labor, Marco and Andrea decided to move on with their lives. Both of them had new projects in mind. Andrea decided to relocate to London, while Marco continued to study. Meanwhile, Fagiano was planning on using the rest of his property to earn some income while he continued his task. Soon, Fagiano started to rent the upper floors of the building. Archaeological digs are not cheap, and neither is setting up a restaurant. Thankfully, Fagiano brought in some money through other properties. However, regardless of the cost, Fagiano started to lose interest in the ancient treasure, just like his sons. After all this time, the project began taking its toll on him. Needless to say, Fagiano found himself losing steam with the project. At one point, I couldn't take it anymore, Fagiano remembered. 
I bought cinder blocks and was going to cover it up and pretend it never happened. I don't wish it on anyone. While he felt desperate to move on to a normal life, city officials pushed him to continue excavating. Furthermore, Fagiano's architect explained to him that he would be better off without sludge laying underneath future restaurant bathroom. However, Fagiano was thinking about putting his eatery dream on hold again. After all, he had to do something with his ancient treasure. In the end, Fagiano found himself another business. Instead of opening an eatery, Fagiano founded the Museum Fagiano. It is an independent archive displaying Fagiano's findings. Nowadays, the Museum Fagiano has become one of the places for tourists to visit in Italy. In fact, it is one of Lecce's top-rated museums and the city's only independent one. While opening a museum wasn't exactly his original plan, Fagiano is happy with the outcome. Ultimately, he feels incredibly lucky to have found an ancient treasure hidden beneath your building. It's a dream, like something out of an adventure film. Now, 11 years later, the museum remains open for anyone who would like to learn a little bit more about Lecce's past. Let's take a little tour of the museum. The museum takes visitors through more than 2,000 years of history. After tons of research, Fagiano managed to track down the entire history of the building and the plot of land. The tour starts at the beginning, in the 5th BC, when the Messapian lived on the land. Later, in the Templar times, 12th century, construction on the building began. The Templars possibly even used the building in some capacity, as rare Templar symbols were found etched in the rooftop tower of the building. A secret Templar home might also explain the escape routes Fagiano found in the catacombs. After Templar times, the building switched hands for the first, but not the last time. With its new owners, the building's tale continued to grow. Sometime around 1300, the building became a convent for the Order of Franciscan Nuns of St. Clair. This explains many of the strange finds that Fagiano discovered like the underground chapel and the many light tombs, meaning uncovered, that he found in the catacombs. They also found a granary and cisterns dating back to the same time period. Of course, these are just a fraction of the more than 5,000 archaeological finds Fagiano discovered. These artifacts and the layers of the basement tell the building and city's history, making it a must-see for any tourist in Lecce. Fagiano even made small scenes like the one above, using artifacts he found in the basement, in an attempt to recreate what the building may have looked like centuries ago. What visitors love most is how the museum gives them a glimpse into the entire history of Lecce. Long before even Roman times, the Messapians were an ancient tribe who inhabited the Salento region and also founded Lecce. Since then, many generations have passed through the city. Today, the city boasts over 2,000 years of ruins. Lecce was once a critical crossroads in the Mediterranean, coveted by invaders from Greeks to Romans to Normans to Lombards, the New York Times explained. Despite the various people who have held the city of Lecce, or perhaps because of it, its architecture flourished. In fact, by the mid-17th century, Baroque-style structures began appearing throughout the city, before the style became truly popular. It was because of these ornament sites that the city earned the title of the Florence of the South. However, the museum is more than just filled with incredible stories and artifacts. Fagiano also made sure his museum was state-of-the-art. The first thing he did was install glass floors throughout the building's basement levels. This way, visitors could look down through the ground and see the layers of history, like a 3D timeline. To enter the layers, Fagiano also installed a spiral staircase that leads into the basement and the main part of the museum. No more sending people down on ropes. Maybe Anna Maria found out about little David's adventures. The tour ends in the archive, where museum goers can take a look at all the ancient treasures Fagiano found. They can also ask the museum's docent, Rosa Anna Romano, any questions they have. Romano and Fagiano have the most interesting connection. As it turns out, Romano's husband had a very similar story to Fagiano's. A few years prior, while sailing along the coast not far from Lecce, Romano noticed some large, odd holes in the sea cliffs. Surprisingly, those holes led him and archaeologists to discover the Grotto of Servi. There, they found cave houses and paintings dating back over 12,000 years. Yes, you read that right. Romano's husband made his incredible discovery back in 1970. Just like Fagiano, before he stumbled into the grotto, no one knew what lie just beyond the surface. Since then, the Romanos have been studying Roman and pre-Roman Italian history, making her the best choice for Museo Fagiano.
There were many similar details between Fagiano and Romano's husband's stories. For one, they both found unexpected ancient treasure. However, that wasn't the only factor connecting these two stories. As he put it, we were brought together by sewage systems. Can you believe it? Speaking of sewage systems, Fagiano was eventually able to locate the pipe in question. In the end, he was able to solve his issue. Now everything seemed to be in place for him to continue enjoying his ancient treasure. Meanwhile, he'll be able to use his toilet anytime he wants. However, this time he won't be scared. After all, he accomplished his primary goal. Mario Di Marco, Lecce's historian, commented, Each population that lived here came and left a trace. Later, a city council member added, Whenever you dig a hole, centuries of history comes out. Well, it certainly was Fagiano's case. Although it took him years to locate the pipe in question, Fagiano was incredibly happy to have stumbled upon this amazing, ancient treasure. Now, as a museum, generations of history buffs will enjoy his finds forever. However, if you're thinking this was just a once-in-a-lifetime find, think again. It turns out that Fagiano's story isn't out of the ordinary in Italy. You see, Salento's incredible rich history has made these events relatively normal for archaeologists and urban planners. Italy's human history goes back some 40,000 years. As such, the country is host to an incredible, extensive collection of ruins from ancient eras. Most famously, Italians established Rome, the capital of Italy, in 753 BC. Today, no trip to the famous Eternal City is complete without paying a visit to its incredible still-standing ruins, like the Colosseum. After all, tourists want to see the impressive creations that have stood the test of time. Of course, Rome isn't the only Italian city where these incredible archaeological remnants still stand. There are many, many more all over Italy. In fact, Italy contains more ancient artifacts and ruins than most other countries. Rome is just one of Italy's many incredible cities. There's the famous Pompeii, a snapshot of Roman life, frozen in time thanks to the ash of Mount Vesuvius, which erupted in AD 79. There's also the city of Verona, one of the only cities in the world to feature over 2,000 years of uninterrupted development. Naples, Florence, the list of incredibly historic Italian cities goes on and on. These cities also have more in common than just their home country. Because of their historical significance, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, have declared all of these places World Heritage Sites. According to UNESCO, a World Heritage Site is one that has cultural, historical, or scientific significance. The title also comes with internationally guaranteed protections. Today, Italy features 54 World Heritage Sites, more than any other country in the world. 